And uh, we, we thank all of you for being with us tonight. So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Okay. The title of the message tonight is New Wine in New Wineskins. And this is a very important uh, uh, concept that we need the new wine. And I want to start, first of all, and say that when you have the new wine, it's going to bring joy to you. Yeah. Uh, of course, the new wine is the presence of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we see that uh, when you get the new wine, you're, you're intoxicated. Hallelujah. Uh, and uh, that's it. In the natural, uh, people get uh, intoxicated with uh, wine. And, uh, and it causes people to do things that are unusual. That yes. They have boldness and courage to do things. And it's the same in the spiritual realm. When you get the new wine, God's new wine, you're going to be bold, you're going to be courageous, and you'll do things that you would not yeah. normally Supernatural. Do. Supernatural things. Mm. And uh, David is a good example of it because w when a person gets intoxicated, a little person will fight a big man. <laughs> I, I've seen it happen. And, and a good example of that is David. Yes, uh, amen. David uh, went after Goliath uh, when he was intoxicated with the new wine. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. To be king, then he he went mm -hmm. after David and brought and after Goliath, and he brought him down and chopped his head <laughs> off. And, and uh, we know from uh, uh, David's own words that uh, in uh, Psalm Four, verse seven, that uh, there is joy with the new wine. Oh, hallelujah. And uh, we also, G, uh, David uh, penned in Psalm 16, 11, that in the presence of the, the Lord, Lord, there is fullness of mm, joy. Amen. <clears throat> so what I want you to think about is this concept of joy, and then we'll get into more about the new wine, but first, joy is pretty important to have. And, uh, uh, it's something that I got hold of uh, 40 years ago. I, I said, Sherry, mm -hmm. bring the children into the living room. We're going to practice laughter. Yeah, that's right. And, and we started laughing. And, it, you know, those little children, they could just laugh and laugh. And, and I was amazed at how easy it was for them to laugh. But as we get older, uh, a lot of people, they stop that laughter. They don't have that uh, joy within them. Uh, but you've got to practice it. And it's really important to practice it because, see, the when the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are in one place, that's when they're fellowshipping and there's joy mm -hmm. in that place. Amen. There is joy. And, and the Bible says a lot about joy. It says uh, in uh, James uh, verse 2, it says, uh, count it all joy. And so no matter what comes your way, count it joy. Hallelujah. You might say, well, here's something good coming my way. Well, you ought to laugh and, and re rejoice over it. Uh, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. And then you say, oh, but here's something bad coming. Well, here's something funny. You ought to rejoice and, <laughs> and be glad. Uh, <laughs> rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. You say, well, this Hallelujah. is negative and this is bad. And this is a circumstance, a big circumstance. Well, here, here you had David. When he, when he was intoxicated uh, with the new wine, he, he could go up against uh, Goliath and, and defeat him. And when you've got the joy of the Lord, that's what you'll be able to do with Amen. your circumstances. Amen. Amen. You, you know, it says, uh, uh, drive a stake in the ground. We're going to start something new. We're not going to give up this ground. This is our, this is our ground. This is our territory. And uh, we're not going to allow circumstances to come in here and take things away from us. So we're certainly not going to let them uh, take the joy away from them. Amen. Now, now Amen. why is joy so important? Well, can you imagine a big uh, situation, a big calamity coming uh, your way? A and uh, can you imagine that the Lord would say, well, just uh, let's all put our heads in our hands and cry because we, we've never seen anything as big as you're facing. No, that's not the way. That's not the way God approaches things. God has a different perspective. Amen. And uh, Proverbs one twenty six uh, says this. It took me a while to get a hold of this verse, but He said, "I'm going to laugh at your calamity." Yeah. Woo. Now listen, I'm going to laugh at your calamity. Now why? 
Why should that be important? Why, why would God want to laugh at our calamity? Because he wants to set an example for you. Hallelujah. What do you do when calamity comes into your life? Laugh. Hallelujah. Laugh about it. And uh, Brother Fred does laugh. <laughs> so if, he is, if he's laughing, you never really know if he's just so happy and joyful uh, because of something good or if something is evil that's coming uh, because he laughs. So you don't know what I'm thinking. I'm going to be laughing all the time. It's, uh, yesterday, we had a woman we were talking to from Honduras, and she mm -hmm. said, I, I had a vision about you uh, walking around, and you were laughing, and you were full of joy. Well, that's the way we are. That's yeah, the way yeah. we are. You have to be that way. Because if, if you're going to get in the mully groups, if you're going to get down in your own pity party, th then you're not really seeing the fellowship of the Lord. Uh, because where the presence of the Lord is, there is fullness of joy. Amen. And the way you're going to overcome your calamity, the way you overcome your calamity is with joy. Because joy is your first line of defense. Oh, hallelujah. Whatever comes your way, joy. Uh, he said, count it all joy. joy. That's what James said, count it all joy. And, and, and God said, uh, I'm going to laugh <laughs> at calamity and not just anybody's calamity. He's going to laugh at your calamity because he wants you to get in agreement with him. And that if, if they can't steal your joy, they can't, can't keep, keep your, your goods. goods. That's really important. Let me Hallelujah. If they can't. If they can't, can't get, get your, your joy, joy, they can't keep your goods. Woo! Amen. You gotta have your joy. Yes, because see Nehemiah 8.10 says joy gives us strength. And, and so that's the reason it's the first line of defense. It's also off it. It's a key to the kingdom. It's one of the keys of the kingdom. The first keys to the kingdom. Uh, because what is the kingdom? It is righteousness, Just peace, peace and, and joy. joy in the Holy Spirit. So it's the one of the first keys to the kingdom. If you're under attack, what's your first uh, line of defense? Joy. Amen. Remember the joy. Keep the joy because you're looking at things from a different perspective. You're looking at things from God's perspective. Oh, God is never taken off guard. He, he's always joyful. And, and when you see the Father and the Son fellowshipping, there's going to be joy in, in their presence. Hallelujah. And so if you stay where they are and you stay in fellowship with them, and, and then you're going to be overcome with a fellowship of, of the joy Oh, uh, because their fellowship is filled with joy in his presence. There is fullness, fullness of joy. joy. You can't get any more uh, full of joy than you are in the presence of the Lord. So look at things from his perspective. That's how you're going to overcome things because it relates to your strength. Hallelujah. It's the beginning of your strength. Uh, it's about joy. So the joy, see, the joy comes from the new wine. That's what David said mm -hmm. in Psalm 4, verse 7. There is joy in the new wine, and God has given me more than the joy of the natural new wine. Oh, He's given me something supernatural. Amen. It's a supernatural joy. It's a strength that allows me to overcome the enemy, to overcome situations and circumstances. So regardless of what comes your way, Count it all joy. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. And even if they stole your goods, if they spoke evil about you, if they stabbed you in the back, count it all oh, joy. joy. Amen. Don't let them steal your joy. If they can't get your joy, if they can't steal your joy, they cannot keep, keep your, your goods. goods. Yes. Glory to God. This is an Amen. important message. Amen. This is my message. This is my message because I got a hold of it 40 years ago. Amen. And the Lord said that I had been anointed above with the oil of joy above my brethren. brethren. Amen. It's the same thing that they said about Jesus, that he had been anointed with the oil of joy above his fellows. That's Hebrews 1, 9. But if you get in there with him and you'll have the same anointing that's on him. The oil of joy, anointed with the oil of joy. Anybody can have it. Now the new wine, the new wine that I'm talking about here is, is the presence of the Holy Spirit and it's filled with joy. But let me say this, everybody's not ready for it. 
and I want to get, mm -hmm. I want you to be ready and, yeah. and partake of the new wine. Amen. And because why? Because God is doing something new. And the only way that we can be with God when he's doing something new, we have to have the new wine because it's going to give us the joy and it's going to give us uh, the, his perspective on things. Now, there's a lot of people, and this is where we're going to uh, start looking at scriptures. There are a lot of people that say, oh, we've had the wine. We've mm -hmm. had the old wine and the old wine, wine is, is fine. fine. And we don't need anything else. That's what Jesus said in Luke chapter five. He said in verses uh, 38 and nine, he said a lot of people are just going to say, we're satisfied where we are. He says the new wine, this is Luke 5, 38 through 39. New wine must always be poured into new wine skins. Yet you say the old ways are better and you refuse to even taste the new wine that I am bringing. Ooh, and a lot of people Woo! satisfied where they are. Yeah. A lot of people satisfied where they are mm. and they're not even willing to taste the new wine. That's right. Ooh, well, but, but you know, Jesus saved the best for last. Yes, he did. He did. And it's the, for the time that we're living in. That's, right now. That's the, for the remnant, for the new wine. And now I want to talk about, well, how do we get it? Well, a good example of somebody who got the new wine was Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus in John chapter two. You know, uh, she turned to Jesus and said, uh, they need wine. They're they out of wine. wine. Amen. And, 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 you know, she didn't get any encouragement from Jesus. He said, woman, what do I have, what do you have, what do I have to do with you? Huh? This is not the time. Oh, it's not my hour. It, it's not the hour for me to bring forth this. It, she, she got, this is m the mother of Jesus and she got no encouragement even from Jesus, but she got the new wine. Hallelujah. What? You ask for the new wine, you believe for the, the new, new wine, and you receive the, the new wine. wine. And that's the best for the last. Because Hallelujah. Then Mary turned to the servants and said, do whatever he says. Whatever, oh, so you, see how yeah. she, you see how she valued, how uh, she appreciated mm -hmm. the words that came out of Jesus' mouth. Whatever he says, do it. She had asked for the wine. She's going to receive the wine, the new wine. And when they uh, turned the water to wine, when Jesus turned the water to wine and, and the servants took it to the governor of the feast, he said, oh, uh, most people give the, uh, the best wine first. And, and then after people have drunk, then they give them a uh, Less uh, less expensive wine, the, mm -hmm. uh, the wine that's not as good, but you've saved the best for wine last. For last. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. That's the new wine that's, that is available for us. We have the new wine. Mm -hmm. But let me say this there are three types of people. We see people right here that don't want the new wine. So I'm going to give you three different types of Christians. And, and I can say it because I've lived in all three of these categories. And the first, uh, and, and this is when I was young, a young adult and, and married. I served the Lord. I call myself a Christian. I tried to do good Christian things. I went, I went to uh, church services. I, I prayed. Uh, I, I fellowshiped uh, with Christians. And so I, I was serving the Lord. Okay. But during those first few years, um, I, as an adult and of, uh, as our marriage, in our marriage, uh, I wasn't hearing the Lord and I wasn't obeying the Lord. I, I wasn't hearing his voice. And I wasn't obeying it. So the first level are those who are just serving the Lord there. They consider themselves to be good Christians, doing good Christian things. And, and uh, uh, they don't want to do real bad things. They don't want to rob banks or murder people. They, they, they try to do good things. Okay. But that's just serving the Lord. They're not communicating with him. They're not hearing his voice. The second level is, is being filled with the Holy Spirit, and I began to hear this voice. Mm -hmm. So that's a higher level, and that's when you begin to obey. Now, there's a lot of people in this second category where, where they're going along with their life, and if the Lord tells them to do something, they're willing to obey. Mm -hmm. they, they will obey it, but, but they're still passive. They're still passive in their relationship uh, with, with the Lord. And uh, so you've got the first level that are just serving him, another level that will obey him if he tells them, and then there's a third level, and I call this the remnant. <laughs> this is the remnant. 
Oh, you know, Isaiah, Isaiah said uh, in, in Isaiah 6, uh, verse 8, he said, uh, uh, the Lord said, who shall I send and who will go for me? Mm -hmm. And Isaiah said, send me. Hallelujah. Here I am. Send, send me. me. Woo, glory to God. This is the remnant. Hallelujah. This is the remnant. These are the people who get the new wine. These are the remnant. Mm -hmm. Those that are, that are proactive. These oh, are out there acting. And they're seeking the Lord and they're yeah, saying, they're send, me, send, send me, send me, I'm ready to Hallelujah. go. Hallelujah. I'm ready to go. I'm prepared. I've read the word. <laughs> I've studied. I, I'm filled with the spirit. I'm ready to go. Uh, send me. Send me, Lord. That's mm -hmm. That was Isaiah. You look at, and this is to, to back that up, you look at uh, the number of people that Jesus met uh, and, and visited with after his crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. Well, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, over 500 people. Jesus saw over 500 mm -hmm. people. And that's after his, after his crucifixion, after mm -hmm. his burial, after his resurrection, more than 500 uh, people. But isn't it interesting that a lot of those fell away? A lot of that 500 mm -hmm. and only 120 20 were in the ca upper room. came to the appointed time in the upper room. Only the remnant. Oh, listen to me. Only the remnant mm -hmm. uh, came. And that's uh, mm -hmm. Acts chapter 1, verse 15. And then uh, they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and tongues of fire upon their head. And, and they all spoke in tongues. And then uh, verse 15, uh, Peter said this. Uh, uh, still in Acts 2, and he said, these are not drunk. Yeah, these are not you, drunk as, as you, you suppose, as you, suppose, uh, as you assume. Uh, they, they, they're intoxicated, but they're not intoxicated with a natural wine. They are intoxicated mm -hmm. with the new wine. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. They're intoxicated with the new wine. The new wine. This is the remnant. Not the over 500, not the multitudes that he had uh, said all of this was going to happen, that he, he told them this was going to happen. But I'm just talking about what happened to the more than 500. So we've got around 400 that didn't even show up at the appointment to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Only oh, 120. Yeah. The remnant showed up there. Well, that, that was Isaiah. He was the remnant. He said, here oh, I am. am. Send, send me. me. So if you if you get to that point, see I said there's three types of people of Christians. Those that are just serving him, those that are uh, will obey him when they hear from him, and, and because they're still all passive in those first two groups, but it's the third group mm -hmm. that says I'm active and I, I want mm -hmm. to be sent mm -hmm. and I, I'm here in your face, Lord. I want mm -hmm. I want to know where you want me to go this day. Amen. What do you when I get up at in the morning, what, what do you want me to do this day? Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is the remnant that he's going to uh, pour out his new wine on. Mm. And why do you need, need the new wine? Because you're going to have to have this in order to have the strength to keep up uh, with the horses and the chariots mm. and, and what God is doing in, in these days, in the in this Hallelujah. time, uh, we've got to have the new wine because we've got to look at things from his perspective. See, if we're all uh, uh, in the mully grubs and in a pity party, we're not looking at things from his perspective. His perspective, uh, when we fellowship with him, uh, uh, we're full of joy because that fellowship between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in his presence there is fullness of joy. And the only way we can see the way he sees and he's seeing and doing new things. The only way we can see what he's doing, we've got to have the same perspective. We've got to see from the same perspective. We have to be filled mm. with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And we've got to be filled with the new wine. And that's where the joy comes up. Count it all joy, regardless of what comes your way. You've got to keep the perspective of the Lord. And he has... He's doing something new, and we need to be right there with him. Let's be a part of the 120 and not the, the 380 or 400 uh, so that turned away, that didn't show up for their appointed time. There is a, a, an appointed time, and we're in, we need to know the times that we're living in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We need the new wine. And when we receive 
the new wine, it's going to have some impact on us because it's going to come into our spirit and, and it's going to affect our unction of the spirit or the intuition of our spirit man. And uh, so we can be carnally minded and everything goes by the carnal mind, but when we receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit and we have the new wine uh, within us, we're going to see some things going on uh, and response from our spirit man uh, that's the unction of the spirit that that's also the uh, intuition and it comes from god given wisdom Hallelujah. and god given knowledge and god given discernment see those things those are those are gifts of the holy spirit and they come in and so when you feel with the holy spirit you begin to operate in the gifts of the holy spirit now, the people that are just uh, serving him, you don't see them operating much in the gifts. The people that are will obey him when they tell him to do something, you don't see them operating uh, much in the gifts. But those people who are out there that are proactive, that they want to be doing what God is calling them to do, and they're receiving the joy of the Lord, and they're, they're staying in his, in his presence and being filled with his presence and filled with the joy, uh, then you begin to see them operating in the gifts, operating in the gifts, and they, they've got the unction of the Holy Spirit. So no longer are they being led by the carnal mind. Holy the carnal mind it, it is hostile to God, and, and it cannot obey the things of God. So the first one is the intuition. That's one of the things that's going to change, but that's all from God-given wisdom and knowledge and discernment. But then there's more than that. There's also inspiration inspiration that comes into your spirit you're going to have uh, enlightenment and and the light's going to go off and and as a result of that you're going to have creative ideas and uh, ideas about where to go and who to see and maybe you'll see somebody mm -hmm. and maybe you haven't seen them in 20 years and then uh, uh, the day or so later, you see that person. Where, where did that come from? Well, you had that inspiration come in there. And so when you have the inspiration come and then the light into your, whole, into your spirit, man, then that's going to be the core of your faith. That's mm -hmm. going to be the core of your faith. If you've heard from the Lord, see, then you've got faith. So faith comes by hearing the word. word uh, but I'm not talking about just a, a, a mental mm -hmm. uh, power. I'm talking about so something that the an inspiration you've heard inspiration from the Holy Spirit in your spirit, man, and then faith arises mm -hmm. and and faith arises. So you can go out and you can do big things. Yes, you, hallelujah. You can defeat your uh, Goliath and you can overcome your situations and circumstances. Oh, glory to hallelujah. God! Now, hallelujah! Hallelujah! People, see, it, it it says we've got to put it in a new wine skin. But otherwise, it's going to burst out, mm -hmm. and, and that be regardless if that's just an individual or that's a group of people. Uh, the new wine goes into the new wine skins, and mm -hmm. so let's talk about those uh, new wine skins for a moment. And I want you to know that uh, there are people out there that are, and this we've even talked to people. Uh, uh, over the last uh, few weeks and and they're going they're f facing these cycles uh of mm -hmm. uh, 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 sickness in their body and then they get better and then they they get sick and then they get better and then they have the cycles mm -hmm. with their finances finances are good and then they're bad and they're financial problems and same with their relationships so sometimes they get good and sometimes they get bad and so they're in, mm -hmm. all in all of these cycles and even in religious cycles where Okay, well, we find a place and we're really excited about it and we're just on fire for God. And then after a while, we have to go someplace else. We need to do something else. And so and so the people get involved in these cycles. And so there's a lot of um, humanistic thinking and, and uh, they're not in, uh, they're not following the spirit and overcoming these things. When we look at Jesus, when we look at Jesus, he's always moving forward. He's not going through these cycles mm -hmm. of up and down and up and down one day and up down another day. See, that, that's what has happened to me because mm -hmm. I, I've been anointed with the oil of joy above, above my brethren, above my fellows. Uh, and, and it's because I practice laughter. I practice joy every day. 
We have to practice mm -hmm. joy. That the new wine, see, it's there available for every person, but everyone is not not going to get it because they're not practicing the joy of the new wine. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not receiving it and being infilled over and over again. It's you're a continual process. It. You've got a hunger and thirst, thirst after it, it. I mean. and, and practice that that joy. Uh, because if, if you get away from the presence of the Lord, uh, then this darkness comes in and these dark things come in and 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 you're not strong like you need to be. See, the strength comes, this is your key to the kingdom, and your first line of defense is your joy. You've got to keep that joy up there and, and, and flowing. Glory to mm -hmm. God. Now, I, I want Cherry to read uh, some verses out of Joel. Uh, this is a promise. This is a promise to all of us. Uh, let's look at Joel 2 and uh, these first two verses about, he promises the, the wine, the new Amen. wine. Let's Amen. look at these verses. Joel 2, 19, the Lord will answer and say to his people, behold, I'm going to send you grain, that's prosperity, new wine, that's joy, and oil, the anointing, and you will be satisfied in full with them. Hallelujah. Okay. And then the next one, Joel 2, 24, the threshing floors will be full of grain and the vats will overflow with the new wine and the oil. See, these are promises of God. This is promises of God for his, uh, for his people Amen. where the joy has withered away. He's saying, no, I, I'm, I'm yeah. bringing it back. He's I'm bringing back the joy, bringing back the new wine. I, He's and, restoring it. He's Hallelujah. restoring the new wine in this time. And I'm not mm -hmm. talking about in the sweet by and by. I'm talking about in this time. He's Here are promises that he's pouring out the new wine and there's joy there. And, and we have to operate in that joy. We, Hallelujah. Just like Mary, just like Mary, the mother of Jesus, she said she asked for it. And, and she wasn't going to be turned away. She was going to get the new wine. Amen. And how glory to God. And not only that, but then it poured out. It it affected other people. See, if you've got the joy, if you're practicing joy, remember what Paul said, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. So if you're practicing joy every day, this is not something you can do uh, just occasionally. This is something you have to practice, practice every day. And that is joy. Be joyful. Whatever comes your way, be joyful. Glory to God, because you can overcome it. It's not going to overcome you if you keep your joy. And uh, they're not going to be able to steal things from you. And they're not going to be able to knife you in the back if you keep your joy. You've got to keep your joy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then this is the verse that we've been dealing with here. Uh, this is our core verse for this series, Joel 2.28. It will come about after this that I will pour out of my spirit on all mankind. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy and your old men will have dreams and your young men will see visions. Okay. So, so we've been talking about these dreams and visions and probably it's all going to happen. These are the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the revelatory gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's going to happen mm -hmm. when we're filled with the Holy Spirit and we're filled with the new wine and the new wines. It's the new wine and us being joyful. But, but if we're not sharing our joy, if we're not, if we're just sitting in a, a corner someplace in, in uh, doom and gloom, uh, then, then we're, we're not growing with that joy. We're not letting that joy grow. But let me tell you about joy. It's something you can give away and it will increase. You, you give it away oh, to the people around you. Hallelujah. You, you be joyful and you give it away mm -hmm. and you give it away. And, and you, you know, the Lord's going to be delighting in you. He said mm -hmm. uh, in, in mm -hmm. Zephaniah in uh, 317, he said, I, I'm going to joy. I'm going to rejoice over you with joy. And I'm going to rejoice over you with singing. Rejo so the Lord is rejoicing. Hallelujah. He's rejoicing over you in singing. He's rejoicing over you with joy. And, and so we've Hallelujah. got to keep that perspective of what he's doing and how he is feeding us with joy. And, and so he's going to, he's going to delight in you having joy. 
you you give him joy you keep your joy you 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 have joy be sure that you don't let anybody rob you of your joy because you get you get weak and, and you need and you wither away you need more joy so you have more strength you gain strength and you lose weariness. You might say, oh, I'm oh, weary. No. Well, you, you, you've got to increase in your joy. Hallelujah. That new wine. In the new wine. Glory to God. Mm. And, and so it's all about the mindset. That's the wine skin mm. is your mindset. You've got to change your way of thinking. And when a big uh, a difficult situations come your way, mm -hmm. you've got a new mindset yes. that that I'm going to uh, put my stake down in the ground and I'm not giving up any territory. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to be gaining territory. Mm -hmm. If you have that kind of a mindset, uh, because I, I'm here in the presence of the Lord, I'm looking from the perspective of the Lord, I'm keeping my joy, glory to God, Hallelujah. and I'm renewing my mind, I'm renewing my mind that this is the time we're living in. He's pouring out his joy, we saw it, and we saw it there in Joel. He's pouring out his joy, Hallelujah. pouring out the new wine, and you can have it, and I can have it, but we have to be like Mary. Even if people are discouraging us from getting the new wine, mm -hmm. it's there for us. It's a promise. It's a promise in the Bible, and, and not only can we have it, but it can overflow, and so we can uh, touch other people's lives. Amen. We can have joy, and I tell you, you walk into a room, uh, and, and there can be turmoil on, and, and people down, and, and, and gloomy, and, and you can bring the light of joy into that situation, and everything changes, and that gives them strength. They gain strength, and they lose weariness. Amen. Ooh, what Amen. an exchange. What an exchange. Hallelujah. Where he gives us beauty for ashes, ashes. and the oil, oil of, of joy, joy for mourning. mourning. Oh, hallelujah. Do you want to make that exchange? Hallelujah. You don't wait until everything is right and you've yeah. got it. You're overcoming in every situation. Don't wait on that. Today is the day. Today is the day. This is the day of salvation and go ahead and be joyful in it. But remember what Jesus said, and this is the last verse I want, want us to read, and this is uh, Mark 2.22. Uh, read this here. You, you've got to have not only the new wine, but you've got to know where to put it. It's got to be put in the new wine skin. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine will be lost, and the skins as well. But one puts new wine into the new wine skins. Okay, so you've got to have a mindset. Hallelujah. You've got a mindset on moving forward, that mm. you are victorious. See, uh, the Lord only has one way for you to move, and that is to move in victory. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. He's moving you in victory. If you're with Thank the you, Lord, Jesus. With you, if you're with the Lord, he's going to move you into victory. That's Amen. always moving forward. Amen. And forget about these cycles. You go around and around with sickness and around and around with financial problems, around and around with relationship problems, around and around mm -hmm. with uh, religious kinds of problems. Forget mm -hmm. all of that. Move forward with the Lord and you've got to keep his perspective and with the mindset and receive the new wine and, and be joyful and then practice joy, practice laughter every day. Don't think, oh, Oh, I'll just wait until I'm just overflowing. No, it, this, is, this is you. You have a responsibility. Practice laughter. Amen. Glory to God. I started it 40 years ago. It changed my life. It changed my life tremendously. Amen. And I'm not going to go back to the way I was. I practice laughter. And when something comes my way, I'm going to laugh. And you won't know what it is. You won't know what I'm thinking. Because I'm going <laughs> to laugh at it, whether it's good or whether it's bad. I'm going to be laughing at Hallelujah. it, whether it's positive or whether it's negative. I'm going to be laughing mm -hmm. at it because I count it all. I count it all joy because I keep the perspective of the Lord. Because as long as I stay in fellowship with him, I'm filled to overflowing with his joy. Hallelujah. Thank you for being here. I hope that this will <laughs> encourage you Amen. to be joyful this day and every day. Turning Hallelujah. it over to Sherry.
Well, this is the day to drink of the new wine. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to pray with, with uh, each one of you. I'm going to um, just put it back on uh, so that we can see all of your faces together. This is such a wonderful, powerful group of, of people. And uh, But the joy of the Lord is that um, the, the new thing that God is doing, and everyone may not understand uh, that, the, the your drinking of the new wine it's uh it's not the the old religious ways and and but it's the it's the new thing that god is doing and uh and so i keep getting in my spirit um uh expansion i i, I was talking to sister rebecca uh yesterday and we talked about expansion we talked about intensifying uh that we just we sense in our spirit uh that there is a um, a great move of the holy spirit uh that is going to touch our lives and just increase uh that power within us and and the joy of the lord of course is our strength that's what nehemiah 8 10 says and so as we as we practice that joy, as we practice laughter, like Brother Fred said, uh, then that's going to increase uh, the, the power that's within us so that we can do more for the kingdom of God. And I know that each one of you, uh, you're hungry and you're thirsty for the Lord. And, and that is, it says that you shall be filled. If you are hungry and thirsty for the Lord, you shall be filled. And so we're going to ask for it tonight. We're going to receive it tonight. And we're going to overflow with it tonight. And we're going to go forth and take it uh, into the workplace. We're going to take it to our families. Uh, we're going to take it wherever we go. Uh, we're going to take that new wine and the joy of the Lord. You know, people are hurting out there. There, there are people that are weak. And they don't know what to do in their situation. But you're going to have the answer for them. Mm 